Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're excited for game week. Um, it'll be fun to watch uh, a lot of veteran guys uh, play that are excited about uh, getting this season started, and then all the new guys that are going to have an opportunity to uh, to play out at the Bill for the first time. Um, we have a number of young player, young players that uh, we feel are, are getting better and, and just need the, those game experience reps. So um, I think we'll play an awful lot of guys, uh, partly because of uh, injury and partly because we just want to find out more about people, especially on special teams. And uh, we know this is going to be uh, uh, a really good football game. Coach Tuke does a great job at SEMO. Uh, I've known about uh, his program in SEMO for a long time. And uh, they're a playoff team perennially in the FCS. Uh, they're probably the best team in the OVC this year. And they have really good talent. So we, we've got to play exceptional football uh, to give ourselves an opportunity to be successful. And um, that's the key for us is we, we've got to continue to push these young guys because um, they need to show up and, and play well on Saturday. Your roster, your depth chart, a lot of young guys on it. Yeah. Um, are, are you even thinking about red shirt concerns at all? Just play who needs to play. Not at all, uh, Fitz. Not not. We haven't talked to anybody yet to say, hey, you're going to red shirt. Um, there's probably some some known names that are O linemen, D linemen that uh, um, need that year of development. Um, and there's a lot of positions that. Um, we're probably going to need to play, you know, just because of the depth and because of us learning more about guys. And um, some guys were here in the in the spring that gives them an advantage. And, and other guys like Asa Newsom just showed up in June but was mature enough to uh, get into the depth chart. And we're excited about uh, those type of players because, um, you know, with the, the long haul of the season, you're going to need all of them. COVID bonus year has been a great benefit. But now you look across your offensive line, you got a bunch of dudes that won't be here next year yep. in all likelihood. And and you've got some of that on defense too. Is it also trying to get those guys worked in? Because you're going to need them next season big time. I don't care about next season, Fitz. Come on now. <laughs> he doesn't care about next season. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, boy, tell you what, that's a tough question for me to answer on August 2024. Um, you know, I, I'm excited for those guys to come back, but more importantly for the all oh, for the Sam Hex and Andrew Line gangs, um, some of those guys uh, to learn. You know, Hadley even still to learn from those guys how to prepare um, and, and and you know what to expect and and how to dominate uh, at this level. And so I tell all those young guys, this is what a bonus this is to have those guys back because they're not going to be back to make sure that uh, they learn as much as they can from them. And really, more than anything, is their preparation. You had some guys that didn't show up on the depth chart chart like Uso and yep. um, Duff. I, I mean, are, are, is it just a temporary thing with them? Yeah, and we, don't have, we don't have anybody out long term. Um, you know, uh, Duffy's the the one that I know is not going to play uh, on, on Saturday. Um, and we hope to have him back in the next couple weeks. And whether or not that is Troy, whether or not that's Missouri, it's going to be depending on how he uh, continues to progress. Uso is going to practice today, and I was not thinking that he would. Um, so we'll see how he can progress. He's been out a couple of weeks, so we'll see what he can do. Um, but it's good to have him uh, back at practice today. Uh, Daniel Green practiced yesterday. Keegan practiced yesterday. Um, so we're gaining more and more bodies back, which we need. Um, uh, just because some of those guys haven't practiced for a little bit, we've got to continue to to work on our depth, but uh, also have to get you know some of these young guys ready to ready to play significant roles. Noticed uh, Seth Porter on special teams, but not with the receivers. Is that just a biggest thing? Is Seth was another one of those guys that's been been banged up uh, quite a bit through camp. He's in the mix at wide receiver for sure. Um, I think maybe when we, we we did the depth chart, it was hopeful that Seth could could be a part of special teams, if nothing else, because that's his his biggest role right now for us. Uh, especially the fact that he was banged up. But Seth practiced yesterday, and I didn't think Seth would practice yesterday. You know, we had our last real hard practice on Friday. We had a lighter practice on Saturday, gave him off Sunday, and then we see him for the first time on Monday night. Um, and Seth practiced pretty well yesterday. So he'll probably have a more significant role on, in both teams and on offense.
with the new clock rules, we saw a little bit of it last week, how teams approached it. But what's your philosophy with the extra time running off after first downs? Do you see yourself going faster because of it, slower mm -hmm. because of it, or no change? Um, I don't see any change. I think we'll see how it um, how it plays itself out here over these first few weeks. Um, but I don't see us changing. I, I mean, I know that games are going to be a little bit shorter, but I don't know how much shorter they're going to truly be when you add all the all the replays and and everything else that you have. So um, we'll have to play it by ear each week to see how it's how it's changed the game. You've got a revamped sec secondary with three fifths of the positions. Simo's pretty exper experienced with his quarterback and wideouts. Uh, Ornoy and Vic. Yep. What uh, just what's the challenge present to you guys coming well, up on Saturday? Yeah, uh, they have uh, really good skill players, um, really good running back, um, a number of good wide receivers, and a quarterback that's back uh, that um, I thought played really well um, last year for them. Um, you know, we're going to learn a lot about our guys in, in the secondary. Uh, you know, whether it's Jacob Parrish that's played a decent amount of football for us, but now is in a starting role, to Will Lee that hasn't, to you know, Keenan Garber that uh, uh, did in a Big 12 championship game, and now he's getting a great chance to to play at corner. I mean, those those three guys are going to really be tested. Um, you know, we, we have to be able to rush a passer. Are we going to be allowed to rush a passer? Are they going to be a lot more quick game? Are they going to be a lot more sprint out? You know, how are they going to try to be efficient throwing the football? Um, you know, because, you know, we're going to try to lay our ears back and try to rush those guys too. I mean, we need to get Cleed Duke and Brendan Mott and um, Nate Matlock and Roland. Um, but, um, you know, and then the safety position, you know, Kobe Savage, just having him back. Um, gives us such great leadership back there and a, and a calming force uh, as far as he's you know, he's an all big 12 performer and for him to be back 100 percent playing really really fast uh, he'll kind of direct a lot of the traffic back there but uh, I'm excited to see VJ Payne he's going to play a new position this year um, to see Siegel to see uh, Colby McAllister um, there's a number of guys back there Jordan Wright's going to play uh, a different position and, and they're all really good athletes uh, they're all really good players, but they just don't have the experience yet. Heard a lot about uh, Uso through the summer and, and fall. What have you seen from uh, Ilalio and uh, Banks that yeah. kind of? Was, yeah. What well, seen? when Uso went down, those two kids took the the lion's share of the reps, and uh, uh, Damian uh, is prepared and ready to go. He's watched Eli, you know, for a couple of years, and. And when his number was called, I don't care if it was a couple plays, he was always ready to go. So Damien's had a really good fall camp. Uh, Banks is learning how to do things our way, but he's really he's a he's a disruptive guy inside. I, I've been really impressed with Javon. I think he's going to have a tremendous year um, and splitting time in there with Damien, um, and then however much Uso can help us early on in the season. But uh, um, those two guys. You know, last year Eli was going to take 80% of the reps. This year we don't have to have that. We can we can move guys around and keep those guys fresh. And with Tennant, we've seen his leg, his leg strength. What level of confidence has he shown in the last few weeks? Um, been really impressed with with Chris. Uh, he's had a, a a great camp. Um, you know, he's got his got a great focus, got a great mindset on things. Um, I see a more relaxed guy. Uh, and uh, he's kicking the ball really well. But I just see a guy with confidence, with belief that, you know what, um, he had a hiccup last year. Uh, he knows his ability. We all know his ability. Everybody on the team knows his ability. And so I I'm excited. I I'm excited for Chris, and I'm excited for Jack Bloomer. I mean, those two guys, you know, Jack kicked a lot in 2020, uh, didn't kick as much uh, – um, when Ty was really banging it in the last couple of years, but Jack came back for his sixth year, um, and he's punted the ball really, really well all, all through fall camp. And I think it helps when you got a guy like Randon that you know where the ball is going to be. Um, so um, you, even though you lost Ty Zentner, I, I'm excited about our specialist group. Is there an item or a phase of your team that you're kind of most intrigued to see for the first time when you guys are out there on Saturday? Secondary and receivers. You know, those are the two areas that um, – you know, everybody wants to see the running backs. Um, I think DJ Giddens is ready to roll. 
Uh, and I know Treshawn is too. Just our, our wide receivers. I think RJ Garcia's had a tremendous fall camp. And you talk about confidence and belief. Um, that that guy's made play after play after play, and he knows our offense really well. And he's on a, he's on the same page with with Will. But I'm excited to see he and and Keegan and and um, Jaden Jackson and you know Phillips going to be there. He's always been that steady phase and then uh, or steady uh, force for us. And then, um, you know, just the secondary, how we respond. Is there a plan or do you know what your approach will be with the back of the quarterback situation out of the gate? We'll play it out. We don't have a plan. Will Howard and then whoever's the next one that CK is ready to go with. Going <clears throat> off that a little bit, have you had a situation where I know he was here for spring a true freshman come in and and work his way to being an or for the, for the second string for for quarterback. Uh, Easton Stick was when we had him up at at NDSU and and he's with the Chargers now, so rightfully so. Um, Avery's done a really good job uh, of you know being here in the spring and learning as much as he can uh, and learning from Will and learning from Rubes and just um is having a really good fall camp um and so is so is rubley you know and, and jake missed a handful of days about a week ago that maybe gave avery some more reps to for us to see more and more of avery but then rubes is back healthy practice last few days and doing some really good things um so we feel really comfortable at the quarterback's box we've we feel like um you know that, that everybody knows that will is is the guy um, but both the other two are competing every day for the number two job, and and um, we'll just see how it plays out. I, I can't I can't tell you how it will work um, if something happened to Will, uh, who would go in? You know, it's something that CK and I are, are really, you know, talking about on a daily basis. What has impressed you most about Jason Newsom since he he got to campus? Maturity. You know, he's a competitor. He you know he grew up. Uh, in a family that uh, uh, had a lot of great athletes and, and coaching um, with his dad, uh, experienced coaching track for uh, decades, um, yeah, that he's he's built for this moment. Um, and he, is he going to make some mistakes? You bet. He's not Austin Moore yet. And the greatest thing is Asa knows that. And so he's learning every day. And I, my hat's off to somebody like Austin Moore that takes the time, is very patient to just keep preaching everything to him and keep spoon feeding him as much as he can, um, because Austin knows how much we need Asa um, to be uh, effective. And Asa will be on some special teams and he'll play defense. I mean, we're if we had a seventy play game, Asa or uh, Austin's not gonna play all seventy plays, so Asa's gonna play. Believe it or not, it's been two hundred seventy days since you won the Big Twelve championship. <laughs> I'm glad you're here to give me that nugget because I would have <laughs> never guessed. I would have thought it would have been. You know, 40 days ago. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it just seems like, you know, it was a few weeks ago. Um, we all know the rankings and we all know, you know, the, the target on the back. What is the mindset of this team right now? To not to listen to the media. Because, <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot of great expectations out there. And I appreciate all you guys throwing those high expectations on those guys. Um because they've earned the right because of what they did last year. Uh, but now we have to go prove it on the field. And um, there's a lot of guys that uh, hear of those expectations and hear of what was done and haven't done anything yet, you know, that, that are, are in our too deep or are starting that haven't played for us yet. Uh, and, and so for, for those guys of gaining that experience and watching the, you know, watching the older guy in front of them, uh, how he prepares throughout this week, how he prepares on Friday, how he prepares himself on Saturday like a pro to be successful. And um, so, I mean, it, uh, there's high expectations. And, um, you know, we now are just focused in, because we're in game week, to eliminate those distractions of high expectations and focus on what we have to do every day to be successful, to give us a chance to be successful on Saturday. I just spoke with Brendan Mott's father out there a little bit ago. Here's an Iowa guy, a walk-on starter. Yeah. When you think of Brendan, just what comes to mind? A <laughs> uh, skinny kid from Iowa that came in here uh, that um, wanted an opportunity. And uh, I know his best friends for life are on this team. And I watched him continue to get better and better. 
Uh, and, um, you know, last year uh, we knew he was ready to, to contribute, and not only did he contribute, he was one of our best players on defense. And so I saw his confidence grow, and uh, I see his leadership growing, and um, he plays the game – hard and he plays a game physical and he's a really smart football player and he's helping you know the the Jordan Allens the Cheaties the, the Ryan David he's helping those guys because he was once that young player too uh and so I think Mott can have an all-conference type season as far as offensive line chemistry obviously is important but uh last year you were breaking in a lot of new guys but the fact that these those guys are all back. Does that make it easier now to maybe work some of the younger guys in because they've yeah. Well, it's it? created some some unique situations and some competition for us because we don't have Duff right now, and so Carver Willis will start at right tackle. Um, now, how how is Riles going to mix and match? to get uh, Liney in the game, to get Sam Hecht in the game, to get TP in the game. I mean, those guys jump at me, at me right now of guys that, are, that we want to play. But somebody then has got to go over to right tackle. Is that Liney? Is it Biebs? You know, I'm, those are things that I know that we're ironing out every day and we're continuing to mix those guys around to find what best five work together and in what position they work together. Um, so it's been... You know, it's great to have all those guys back, but when, you, when you're down one of the guys that's been a three-year starter for you, um, you know, it creates a little bit of uh, uh, opportunities for some other guys, you know, whether it's Liney, Sam Hecht, uh, to step up and get an opportunity. Same as Carver. What does right guard look like now? I think you listed both. Uh... Yeah, both of them are going to play um, a bunch, and um, that that's also where – one of those guys could move her over to left guard if we moved Beeb out to, to right tackle a little bit. Um, um, Sam Heck could play center or guard. And so, I mean, that we feel like we have we have more depth inside. Our depth outside becomes uh, becomes Cooper Beebe until we get Duff back. And, and you know, we're hoping that's uh, in the near future here. I also want to ask about the wide receivers behind Phil. Yeah. I think uh, Jace Brown and uh, – yeah. And the other porter, what are yeah. the, was that more uh, consequence of Seth being out, or have they probably much as much as anything? Seth had taken the lion's share of the reps behind Phil, and then we lost Seth for I can tell you if it's been a week or ten days of practice, and so it gave those other guys uh, an opportunity, whether it's Shane, whether it's uh, Seth or uh, Shane or Jace, uh, even Sterling Lockett. We've given a lot of guys some looks there. Um, and as as Seth gets back healthy, I think that'll be solidified. But you know, the more reps those guys get, we're hopeful. You know, it's like Philip needs to be able to play multiple positions. Keegan needs to be able to play multiple positions. RJ needs to be able to play multiple positions so that we can plug those young kids in. You know, Spivey's another guy that we're looking at too. You touched on it very briefly, but the challenges the SEMO offense what do they present? Um, experienced quarterback and. Playmakers and skill outside. That that's a, and and a running back that um, has uh, been productive for a while. And so you know the RPO game. You know the run pass option. Uh, they they do a tremendous job. They're they're going to get their guys the ball in space and um, let them operate. Uh, uh, it's a, it's an experienced offense. It's an experienced staff. They've been together for a long time. Uh, and our big thing is they're going to complete some passes. They're going to have some runs. We have to try to eliminate the explosive play. I mean, that's a big thing is we can't let somebody have a three-play 70-yard drive. If they're going to drive at 70, it's got to take them 10, 12 plays and make them earn it. And that's something that we've emphasized and talked about because I didn't think we were great last year. Uh, and Klanderman would, would echo in red zone scoring. I mean, we need to – people are going to move the ball. I mean, there's great offenses in all levels of college football. You just – when they get in the red zone, you got to be able to make them kick field goals. Chris, two questions. Uh, uh, <clears throat> linebacker, you've got Daniel, you've got Austin, so two big-time veterans. But are you as complete at that position as you've been since you've been here? Yeah, and the reason we are, I would say, is everybody's going to now put Des Purnell with those two guys. Des Purnell has had as good a fall as any kid we've had in the program as far as you know, owning his position. There's 
an undisputed, he is the Sam backer. And the plays that he's made, um, the confidence he has, he knows the defense. I mean, I, I'm excited because we have booking Sam and Will linebackers that know our defense as well as anybody in Austin and Dez. Um, and then who's the next guy? Jake Clifton uh, might be the, the biggest unsung hero because he's played all three positions already in, in fall camp. He's played Sam, Mike, and Will, and he did that last year as a true freshman. It shows you how smart a uh, player he is. He might have to play all three positions this year, um, and we're repping him at all three positions. Uh, and then, you know, we have a lot of young players behind those guys. The one you wanted to ask about was Toby. Yep. Where he was when he got here to where he is now, uh, light years better. Um, you know, he's not on the on the level of of Des, um, just like Ace is not on the level of Austin. But they're improving all the time, and um, we, we need to play him and see where he's at. You know, there's some things that he does really, really well, and there's some things that uh, he's still working on and still learning. But he's also a redshirt freshman. But that's what excites us is you know, there's a big, strong athlete that can really run, that is physical, and he's going to make some mistakes, but he's going to make some plays as well because of his athleticism. One other question for me, uh, the mantra, uh, win the day. How have you seen this team win the day? What are you most proud of when you look at them? Just the fact that uh, fall camp's uh, a grind. I mean, it is 21 days of you know getting up at 6 a.m. and going to bed at 10 p.m. and we have them pretty much all that time other than a couple hour nap of not having a bad day and and winning every day is is the fact of and I told him you're gonna you're gonna get beat in a, on a play you're gonna you're gonna have a bad period the defense is gonna kick the offenses but or vice versa but you, we cannot afford in this 21 days to have a bad day and that's that's not only uh, physically but it's emotionally and mentally and they came to they came to practice every day and um uh, that was probably uh, the best thing, and it's something that, well, they should come to. Well, it's been 103 here the last two weeks, too, and we're going to have that same temperature uh, for the next couple weeks that uh, um, you got to block out all the all the distractions and outside um, noise of, of weather and hot and, and stuff and take care of your body every day um, and, and be prepared to go to work every day. Is any extra encouragement needed as far as not overlooking, or is the football is football mindset so ingrained on these guys? At this point? Um, uh, both. You know, you, you're going to talk about the fact that uh, you know we've got you know, whether it's uh, Marquis Siegel played at that level and played pretty well, and now he's a starter for us. So you know, there's really good football players, and they've seen the Josh Hayes and the Briley Moores and so on and so forth. So there's really good players at that level, but also the fact of we got to focus on us. We got to focus on, you know, who is that next linebacker in the game? Who is that next safety that's going to step up? Who are the handful of core guys on special teams that are going to take take over the Nick Allen roles? Uh, that guys that that were just mainstays that were going to take all those snaps. I mean, that's what we're trying to figure out uh, over the next three weeks. Honestly, in the non-conference season, is who are we going to count on? Um, so that we don't have to play Austin Moore and Des Purnell on every special team snap because you can't play them on every snap when it's 103 degrees out. So um, are you ready to ha answer that opportunity when you get it? And we talked a lot this fall camp about you know, your opportunity. I don't know when it's going to come, but when it does come, you better be prepared and not be, oh, wow, it's my chance. I hope I prepared. No, you are prepared. Come back to the first question about red shirts. How much has your philosophy changed on that issue from now compared to when you first got this job? Uh, quite a bit. You know, just because of roster management, it has to. You know, there, there weren't as many people coming and going in college football in general, and I think a lot of coaches would tell you that. And, um, you know, if they're, if they're mature enough and physical enough to play early, then you probably have to play them early. Um, not that they would leave as much as – this is a physical game, and what happens when you don't play that kid that's a, that's a true freshman that could have played, and then his redshirt freshman year, he has a bad injury, and you could have played him, and now he's lost two years. Now he's two years behind the game. So I think a lot of coaches are, are going into that with, um, you know, kids are, are physically more ready to play coming out of high school, but it's still the mental part of it, making sure that they, you know, can understand what you guys what your team is doing uh schematically offense, defense and teams.
I just wanted to ask one about the running backs. When it comes to DJ and Treshawn and maybe even Anthony, somebody else, how, how, what's the perfect way in your mind to divvy up carries in game one? It's a good question. It's just going to depend on, on – uh, how the how the flow of the game's going? I'm gonna let BA handle that. Brian, I think, is one of the best running back coaches in college football, and BA's done this a long time. And and you know whether it's hot hand, whether it's uh, the plays we're calling, you know Brian's got a great great feel for what these guys really do. And and you're right, there's a number of guys that can that can carry the football and and protect and catch the ball out of the backfield. And so uh, I'll leave that to BA, but BA's got a good plan for it.